Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. We want to thank you for being here with us today. Welcome to the St. Mark live stream for September the 13th, year of 2020. We hope and pray that you have had a great week this far. But just in case you haven't, we're going to have a good Sunday morning this morning. So we ask that you would just join in with us, clap your hands, run around, whatever you feel like doing, and praise the Lord. Come on, put your hands together as we go into service this morning. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, 
Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. And he said, go, tell this people, people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate, and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak, whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and application of his word. Amen. Shine on me. Simple here today, Heavenly Father. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And those who are looking on Heavenly Father virtual, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes. yes. We know, Heavenly Father, that it's your way. We don't understand it, Heavenly Father, but we just going to praise your name anyway. Yes, yes. Uh, the virus, Heavenly Father, and whatever's going on, uh, it's your will. Let your will be done. Yes. yes. And we're going we to just trust and lean on you, Heavenly Father. Yes. And we will oh. understand it better in the by and by, Heavenly Father. But as of now, Heavenly Father, we're just going to come to praise your name. Yes. We come here today to uplift your holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes. When there are fewer gathered in my name, Heavenly Father, you see it. I'll be there in the midst, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Heavenly yes. Father, we know, Heavenly Father, that you can hear us, Heavenly Father, no matter where we are. Yes. Father, we, can, we can praise you, Heavenly Father, the holy yes. anytime, yes. Name, anyway, Heavenly Father. Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, in your name. Thank you. Thank you for everybody who's, who, who believes in Jesus Christ. Yes. Who's standing on yes. the Father, yes. believing in uh, uh, church, Heavenly Father, that praises your holy name, Heavenly Father. Yeah, you're worthy. Yes, sir. Heavenly oh. Father, I had enough of tongues. I couldn't, I couldn't thank you enough oh. Oh, for what you've done for us. Yes. You brought us a mighty long way. Yeah. Yeah. And for that, we got to say thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank Lord. you, Father, for the sick and shut in, Heavenly thank Father. You. Please, Heavenly Father. Lord. All over the land, 
Heavenly Father. Yes. Some want to get up this morning, Heavenly Father, but Heavenly Father, yes. they will Heavenly Father, but touch healing the little bitch over you. Bless them, Heavenly Father. Keep them. Heavenly Father. Bless the church, Heavenly Father. Bless the pastor here at the same month, the shepherd of this church. Yes. Bless yeah. the associate pastor, Kerry Asbury. Yeah. Name Glee. Yeah. Bless him, Heavenly Father. Let a crown of him be with him and not as from Ohio. Yeah, they, they might proclaim an uncompromising gospel, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Let's preach the word. Yeah. We need a word in time such as this. The world is hungry, yeah. Heavenly Father. Oh, no. Heavenly Father, this world is messed up. This yeah. world is not of our own. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we know, Heavenly Father, that the right oh, way, Heavenly Father, yeah. is always wrong in some men's eyes, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Heavenly Father, things are telling us to do we don't do. Yeah, yeah. we should do, we do anyway. Yeah. But you keep on blessing us. On. Thank you for your grace. Keep on. Keep on. Live on grace. Live on mercy. Live on, mercy. Yeah. Live on guidance, yeah. Heavenly Father. Thank you right now. Yeah, no. Strong deliverance, Heavenly Father. We need you. Please we can't make this journey without you, Father. Yeah. Every time I get behind this wall and I, I, I say to you, Heavenly yeah. Father, hear my prayer. Yeah. Hear my prayer, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Heavenly Father, hear my prayer and answer my prayer, Heavenly Father. Yeah. We need deliverance. Yes, sir. We need healing. Yeah. Yeah. We need understanding. Yeah. yeah. We need peace. Yeah. We need joy. Yeah. Salvation, yeah. Heavenly Father. Oh, no. Give it to us. Grant it, Father. In your name. Yes. We all ask in your name. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. goes through left less we trust in you. Believe in God, be also in me, you said in your word. Yeah. Yes. That's in my father's also many mansions, you said. Yeah. What yeah. so I would have told you. Yeah. Go away and prepare a place for you. Yeah. When I get that place prepared, I'll come again. And receive it to myself. And I just want to yes. thank you. I want to be where you are, Heavenly Father. Yes. Receive it. I want to hear your word. Say, servant. Yes. Servant. Yes. Servant. Yes. Servant. Yes. Well done. Well done. My good and faithful servant. Yes. Keep the faith. My yes. good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher. I want to hear you say, come on up a little higher. Yes. I'll make you ruler over many of you. Yes. Who would want to serve a God like that? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We, 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 we had no God on our side, Heavenly Father. Yeah. We were lost. Yeah. Oh, oh, my Jesus. Hello. Oh, my Jesus. Hello. Oh, my Jesus. Hello. Tell me where I'll be lifted up. Yeah. I'll lift him up. I'll draw yeah. all men. All men. Yeah. We didn't lift him up. Lift him oh, up, yeah. St. Mark. Yeah. What's lift him up? Yeah. He's worthy. Oh, yeah. And I guarantee you. He'll do, that's what he said he'll do. Yes, he will. You keep the faith, that's what you do. Yeah. Stay strong. Yeah. yeah Lord. Don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. Ooh, yeah. The Lord is able, I tell you. Oh, yeah. yeah. He made a difference in my life. Yes, Lord. I'm on my way to hell. Yes, Lord. No God on my side. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank, you. Lord. thank you right now. Yes, thank you, Lord. It's come to say thank you. Thank you. Bless this church, come to say one. Yes, thank you. The rest of the man is going to proclaim the word. Yeah. Let him preach the power come down. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. No short sure reputation that the end. Men might be saved. That's all we look yeah. for. Looking for men to be saved. Yeah. Turn for them. We can wait. Yeah. Oh, come on. Well, uh, We're going to lift him up today. Yeah. We have much more than that. Just want to give you the praise, Father. Yes, sir. Yes. These words. Just give us the blessing. Jesus don't rest like the rest of your son, Jesus' yes. name. Him who died with your knees. Yes. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I can't. 
Praise the Lord. Thank God for our brothers and for their sharing. Thank God for your presence this morning on this medium one more time. I pray and trust that the Lord has been keeping you and has been sustaining you. Pray and trust that you will continue to practice social distancing. You would continue to abide by the rules and the regulations that have been set forth by many in the health care arena. Although the mayor uh, lifted some restrictions, uh, I think he's just feeling the weight and the pressure of them from the business sector. Because when you look at the numbers uh, of people who have contracted and people who have passed away, we are still in the midst of this epidemic. And so please do your level best um, to stay safe and to be safe. This is not a time for you to let your guard down. And uh, uh, knowing, well, we find something out just about every day concerning coronavirus. Um, how it's morphing, shifting, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, uh, we remember in prayer the cousin of Minister Wright, uh, uh, Sister Charbonnet, uh, who tested positive for antibodies of COVID-19 but did not go through any of the classical symptoms that others have gone through. Oh. And she's a young lady. And so if she was able to move about, not be hospitalized, we got something on our hands. And that's why they keep trying to tell you young people. It affects you differently. And because it does not affect you the way it affects me, you bring it to me. And then it just may take me right on out. So you need to practice social distancing. Breathe, Pastor Glenn. Amen. It, it's, it's bad enough the people who are first responders and have to go to work every day. It, it's bad enough they have to face it. Amen. Amen. And, and so please practice safe distancing. I've asked that we would make our contributions for the Hurricane Laura relief effort. Just put that, if you own Givelify, put that with the COVID-19 response, that portion that we have in there. I pray that you will do your level best uh, uh, since we've all been in for a while. I said last night on the prayer line, uh, you, you're not going shopping. You know, you're not buying something to be dressed up in church with. So send that money so that we can help our sister churches because the Lord requires that we do our level best. Uh, I didn't want to tell you how much to give, but you can just about imagine what it's going to take to help these sister churches get back up. Because many of them were underinsured or uninsured. And for a church to not know how it's going to get back up is a problem for every church. We do not want to get before the Lord and when he starts talking about every cup of cool water every slice of bread that we did not give. Amen? Amen? Just bring it here and I will get it to the people who will get it to the people. Amen. Amen? And I'm hearing from brothers all the time. One brother 
said my, my initial report is that it's going to take over 500,000 for us to be able to get the church back up. Now, he's one of them that's in the category that he's probably going to be able to do it. But just think of some of the others. And, and so we, we want to give, and, and we need to put it in their hand. Uh, the Red Cross and all of them are bringing water and everything else, but these people are going to need dollars yeah. to purchase stuff to redo their building. Amen? Yeah. So I'm asking that we would be sacrificial in our giving. This is not a one-time thing. We're going to need to support until we are sure that they are getting back up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We are strong enough church to be able to do that. All of us giving whatever it is we can give will add up. Amen. And we go to them, find them that are in urgent need and do what we need to do. We've learned through the years from Katrina all the way up on how we need to respond. So I, I pray and trust that, that you will uh, uh, match me with this and, and let us bless some of the people of God. Amen? Uh, birthday wishes uh, today. Uh, Sister Tajana Spears, it is her birthday. Happy birthday, Tajana. Uh, on the 17th will be Sister Gloria Wynn's birthday. Also, Sister Cherry Foster's birthday, so we pray that God will bless them. Uh, on the 18th uh, will be... Uh, Zyra Jones' birthday and Brother Tavares Slaughter's birthday. It'll be Tiger's birthday on the 18th. So we wish them a happy birthday. Um, now they have down here happy 36th wedding anniversary. That's not right. For Brother Ernest and Sister Denise Bugs. I performed that ceremony and it was not in 84. Mm, maybe 94, but it was not 84. Uh, Sister Diane Mark, straighten that out, call your cousin <laughs> and see what year they got married, but I knew it was close uh, to my bride and my anniversary. But we do wish them a happy anniversary. Amen. Happy anniversary to brother and sister Ernest Bugs. We pray that God will continue to bless you with many more years of wedded bliss. Amen. Amen. Uh, as it relates to our prayer list and who all we are praying for, uh, last night, uh, um, I did not see the text until after we were off the prayer line. Uh, the uncle of Sister Bobby Williams uh, went from labor to reward the other day, Brother Joe Day Howard of Homer, Louisiana, the down south Homer, not the up north Homer. But we all just say Homer. So let us be in prayer for her and her family that God will sustain them during this time of bereavement. Let us be in prayer for Brother Craig Ainsley, the brother of Sister Litchie Brown, that God will continue to touch, heal, and deliver him yeah. as only he can. Let us remember Sister Sidney Charbonnet. That's the cousin of Minister Wright. Let us be in prayer for, for them. That was a senior moment right there. Let us be in prayer also for Brother Clarence Hardy, for Pastor Edward McGaskey. For the Viverette family, let's be in prayer for um, Sister Emma Powell, Sister Doris Matlock, uh, Sister Lily Brown, uh, Sister Wilhelmina Clay. Uh, 
time. Let us continue to lift them in prayer. All of our senior members, all of them that are on the sick and shut in list, Sister uh, uh, um, Magaski as well, both Sister Magaskis. Right. Amen. 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 Sister Clara Magaski and Sister Judy Magaski. Right. So let us continue to lift them in prayer. Amen. This morning we are back in that passage of scripture in Romans chapter 5, picking up at verses 12 through 21. On last week, we were laying the groundwork for this passage of scripture. Please understand that this passage of scripture is like a linchpin to what the epistle of Romans is sharing for the people of God. Amen. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 12 because some of you have not read this much scripture all week long. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Verse 13, notice the parentheses here, and it goes all the way to verse 17. It's a parenthetical statement from Paul at verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come, but not as the offense. So also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned, by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That ends that parenthetical statement. Verse 18 and 19 follow closely to verse 12. Verse 12 is given then there is this parenthetical insertion, but it picks back up at verse 18 to further explain verse 12. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. We are continuing with that thought Show me the way, Lord. Amen. As I mentioned, this passage of Scripture is vitally important in the whole of scripture, not, not simply in Romans, but 
the whole of Scripture. Because if you understand Scripture, there is, as Dr. Gardner Taylor has said, a scarlet thread oh, yeah. that runs throughout all of Scripture that points to Jesus Christ. And you follow that and you search it out to understand what God has done. And it is right in this passage of scripture where the apostle Paul argues from the lesser to the greater in making this argument, you, you look at it carefully because Paul is an academician. He studied sitting at the feet of Gamaliel, as they would say. He matriculated through the school that was run by Gamaliel. And in so doing, Paul's thought is a little bit different than the other gospel writers and the epistle writers. For he wrote much of the New Testament. Knowing that he is scholastically trained in philosophy, understanding the language that Paul employed, Sometimes you read what he is saying and you may think it is a riddle. But Paul is not trying to trip anybody up. He is trying to explain it to the nth degree. And therefore in this passage of scripture, I must explain it to the nth degree. If it is not for your benefit, at least for mine benefit. And the reason many are choking in this passage of scripture is because they have been on milk so long. This is the meat. This is the teaching of the church. Paul advocated that we must move on from the elemental teachings of the scripture and move on to the meat. For six months, we've been in this situation. Yeah. This is meat time. This is not milk time. Right. For me to just stand every Sunday and, and just preach uh, about getting over COVID. Yeah. We will get over COVID when God says you get over COVID. Right. And, and you've got to, to trust God's timing. Because God is speaking. You may not be on the wavelength, but you can best believe God is speaking. Amen. Yes, yes. And so while he is speaking and we are trying to get our hearing on right, we've got to delve into these passages of scripture that, that this ain't knee deep. This is neck deep. This is treading in deep Water, where Paul begins to talk about the trespass of Adam resting upon all mankind. Yeah. And we were unraveling it on, on, on last Sunday because, you know, he, he speaks, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin... And so death passed upon all men because all have sinned. Yeah. This, this word wherefore is a conjunctive adverb. Now you can look all that up grammatically just to see what it entails, but the, the short virtue is that it introduces a comparison or a parallel. 
you find the comparison and the parallel between Adam and Christ. The first Adam and the second Adam, of which there is no more. And, and to understand, how, how is it I'm receiving the penalty, the curse, for what Adam did, I didn't do it. You know, we hear that argument from our counterculture concerning reparations and why they ought not pay it because they say, that wasn't me. That was way back yonder. Well, when you go to Hebrews chapter 7 and at verse 10, where it is showing the difference between the priesthood of Melchizedek and of Aaron or Levi, in that verse it says, Abraham, gave a tenth of the spoils to Melchizedek. The Levites got the tenth. Melchizedek was of another priest order. And it says Levi paid the tenth to Melchizedek. If you check the record, Levi is way down the line from Abraham. Abraham gave Melchizedek the tenth, but it says Levi paid the tenth, meaning Levi rendered unto a higher priesthood. Right. How did Levi do that and he wasn't born? Because he was in the loins of Abraham. That's how we get what we get from Adam. If he's the first man and we are his descendants, even though we had not been brought forth, we were in his loins. And it just kept coming down from father to child, father to child, father to child. That's why you owe us reparations because you were yet in the loins of them who enslaved us, who stole us. Yeah. How can you enslave anybody that's free? And then you bring them over here and you work them from, from can to can't and don't pay them nothing. Well, well, I didn't do it. But you living off the privilege. Yeah. You got privileges that I don't have. Uh -huh. Same thing with Levi. Same thing from Adam to Moses and beyond. And so you see that we were in the loins of Adam. Now, if you don't receive that, I don't believe that, then you don't believe Jesus died for our sins. That is what it's tantamount to. All right, I was just really trying to explain this. I didn't mean to get that, that, that into it, but, but it takes that. It's an inherited sin. Sin, sin. Now, look at the passage, and when you see sin, because of them trying to make sense for us in the English, in the original language, it says the sin. It points to the sin of Adam. Now, rabbis and the rest of the Jews held Abraham in higher esteem than Adam. And they were dismissive of the sin. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset you. And we, we are trying to name the sin because we want to come up with, you know, you murdered, you, you were a homemonger, you were a robber. That is not the sin. The sin has to do with what Adam did in the garden. Because in verse 17 in this passage, it talks about them who receive. So if you can receive it, you can reject it. Yes. We want to make it out to be something else. This is just what is in you. Sin. Just got passed on. Our government makes treaties with other countries that they don't even inform us about. 
that we may not even agree with. But it passes over all of us. It's, it's like speaking of the monarchy when they say the crown rather than saying the king. All of them that are in his court, they will decry the crown. And so it is. We get this from Adam. And, and, and so what we need to understand is that the virus we get from Adam is worse than the coronavirus. It is more deadly than the coronavirus. Coronavirus can only kill you once. Sin can kill you twice. Because it's not simply death. Now, do know you will have to pay for your sins. Let, let, let me put a little pin right there and explain this point. Sin diminishes our weight of glory. Um, every time a gun owner fires that gun, it results in diminishing returns. It detracts a little something from that gun's ability to fire accurately each subsequent time it is fired. It takes something from it. No matter how well made the gun is, Every time you shoot it, it becomes less of what it was intended to be. Yeah, yeah. Sin, if we continue in sin, yeah. makes us less yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. of what we are intended to be. Yeah. It, it's kind of like neon lights. Yeah. Some of them are fresh and bright. Others of them have dark spots in it. Some of them blink incessantly, not like they were manufactured to be. Yeah. Removing some of that glory, sin will do that. That's why Brother Danny would say, yeah, ain't gonna be much crown, ain't gonna be much jewels in their crown when we get to heaven. Because diminishing return. We, we have been blessed to been enabled to sin less. Remember I said on the prayer line, that's why you speak to yourself in, in hymns, in psalms, in spiritual songs, that, that, that you keep yourself in that vein, in that consciousness. Jesus said men ought to pray always and to faint not. You've got to cultivate that era of spirituality. Now, I, I'm not an advocate of positive thinking, but Paul said, I think myself happy. You've got to put in this time to develop this. Think, think about all the time we devoted to other stuff. That if we use that intensity for the Lord, how well off we would be. And, and so he's letting us understand that it, it's an inherited sin. It's the federal aspect of sin. It, it, it uh, even is the seminalist attitude toward it. Now you break the word seminalist down, you'll understand what I'm talking about. There may be children watching. But you, you see what we get from Adam. And, and this would have been a great Father's Day message to let fathers understand we are responsible. Well, Eve ate the fruit first. Yes. But Eve was not given the covenant, the command, the edict, the responsibility rested upon the man. Yeah. Amen. 
And therefore, when God came, he didn't say, Eve, where are you? Adam, where are you? And when he showed up, he had some clothes on that he thought would hide what was unseemly. You can't hide sin. God asked him, what, what's all of this? Well, you know that woman you gave me. He started shifting the blame. Sin will cause you to shift the blame. Guilt of sin will cause you to shift the blame. And so we, we as brothers, we, we've got to stand. Because you see, Satan didn't come at Adam directly, indirectly. He used Eve because of her relationship to Adam. As it's been said some years ago, possibly Adam said, I would rather spend an eternity in hell with her than without her. Now that takes a lot. Now that's from the first Adam. Yeah. I'm in his lineage, but I don't think I could, I'm sorry, go that far, Sister Glenn. Because what the law of God says. Yeah. But we, 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 we see and we understand how we got to where we are. Because in reading these passages of scripture, you see sin, the sin, the offense, the transgression, all of that as it relates to Adam. It's always in the singular because it's that one incident. That's all it takes. One mistake can derail a whole lot of stuff. One DUI, not, not getting caught by the law, but taking somebody's life, right? Now that, that, that's really bad, right? But think about the one word you may give in putting down a person. It's just as bad. And do know, your sins will find you out. But you've got to be held accountable for the deeds that you do in this body. Yeah. The, the sin. Mm -hmm. This that Adam brought. And the results are true. The results are certain. But the remedy that God gave does not mean automatic salvation because we've got to receive the grace that God offers as it says in verse number 17 because he says all have sinned right. that is very true in the text all have sinned we've understood the principle of how we got to the all but the primary issue in chapter 5 is who will represent me before God concerning my sin. Because it's been inherited, it's been imputed, and it leads to personal sin. And over and over again, we find our Heavenly Father trying to make amends for our mess up. We find the Lord doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, yeah. seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, 
forgive their sin, and heal their land. Yeah. Prayer is key to repentance. Mm -hmm. This Thursday will mark 180 days Amen. of us calling out to the Lord every evening. I don't know how many more days we'll rack up. I'm not concerned about that. Right. I'm just concerned about all of us touching and agreeing no matter how long it takes. We knew it wouldn't be easy. We knew we didn't know it would get to this point. But he said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, Daniel prayed to the Lord concerning the situation of the Hebrews. The angel, the messenger of God, said, Daniel, do not be afraid. From the moment you humble yourself and pray to the Lord, the Lord heard you. And now I come in answer of your prayer. You can shout on that if you want to. But the Prince of Persia, the enemy, delayed the answer for 21 days. I don't know if it was chronologically 21 days or if 21 days is an idiomatic expression that simply means the darkest night is just before dawn. The hardest fight is simply to keep holding on. But the Lord did answer. Uh -huh. And although it may not come when you want it to, yeah. trust in the Lord's time. Yeah. We already talked about the line up in the loins of Adam. Yeah. When Adam fell, the Lord said to the serpent, on your belly, you shall go. You will bruise his heel. But he will crush your head. The Lord had already worked it out. Am I right about it? But we only get partial revelation. Because it just kept on rolling. Because from Adam came Seth. Out of Seth came Enos. After Enos was born, the scripture says, Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. It was after the fall. After the Cain. An Abel incident. That yeah, transgression started racking up. And they needed someone in whom they could call upon. But yeah, in the fourth chapter they began to call upon the Lord. But the Lord said to Jeremiah, Call to me. And I will answer you. And I will show you great and marvelous things that uh, you have not even thought about. But he said, pray to me. And I will answer. And I write about it. Call upon the Lord. And the Lord will answer. When man fell in the garden. 
the Lord already received the call. Because no sin can come before him. And he knew something happened to that relationship I had with Adam. Am I right about it? Yeah. He keeps advocating that his children would call unto him. He keeps declaring, if you call, I will answer. Am I right about it? I am working your situation out. I'm trying to bring it to a conclusion. Am I right about it? How many times have we heard he is working it out for our good? David said, I called unto the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me out of all of my transgressions. I tell you, the call had been made. But it took 42 generations for the answer to come. It took 400 years for Moses to come and deliver Israel out of Egyptian bondage. God said, I have seen the affliction of my people. I have heard the cry of their sorrow. But now I am come down. It's the same thing of the babe of Bethlehem. The Lord said, I have seen the affliction of my people. I have heard thy incessant cry. And now am I come down to handle this situation by myself. There are some things we incur in our lives that we cannot handle by ourselves. And the Lord will come down and see about you. Am I right about it? I am so glad we have that kind of Savior. He was tempted in all manner like we were, but he didn't have the Adamic nature. He was from a higher order. He had no sin stain in his soul. He had to have that in order to be our substitution. Am I right about it? On the day of atonement, the high priest had fasted 40 days and 40 nights before he made his yeah, stand in for the people. He had to stand in for himself. He would take a lamb with no spot of blemish and sacrifice the lamb, take its blood, sprinkle it on the altar, making pardon for his sin. Take another lamb, put his hand on the lamb as if he's transferring the sin of Israel upon that lamb, sacrifice the lamb, and make atonement for the people. Am I right about it? Adam was a type. The sacrifice was a type. But Jesus came in person. I said last week, he went to the slaughter just like a lamb silent and a lot about it, but he bore the sin that was in the garden that separated man that caused a death sentence to be put upon all of us and he died out on Calvary. Am I right about it? Because he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Read that fifth chapter. In Adam we died, but in Jesus we live. Am I right about it? And then cometh the end when he shall have delivered unto the kingdom of God 
even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power, but he must reign till he had put all the enemies under his feet. Chapter 5 is linked with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He died out on Calvary, but bright early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Am I right about it? I've got to go through what I'm going through, but this too shall pass. I've got to endure some heartache. But I've got to fight on. I've got to take the twist and turn. I've got to go up the rough side of the mountain. I've got to endure sickness. I've got to endure failure. I've got to go through setbacks. But what I'm glad about is that the Lord worked it out in eternity past. Am I right about it? I'm trying to get over sin, but Jesus paid it all. He paid for my sin. Am I right about it? But I'm still in the presence, and while I'm in the presence, from the presence of sin. Am I right about it? I heard the writer say, the cloud shall break open and he will descend with a shout. He must reign until all things are under his feet. He must reign until all are under his feet. He must reign until all things are under his feet. He must reign until all things are under his feet. He must reign until all things are under his feet. He must reign until all things are under Sickness gotta be under his feet. Death gotta be under his feet. If you're still struggling, don't worry about it. Jesus is on the way. Jesus, don't put it under his feet. What you'll worry about, please don't walk on top. What you're struggling with, he's about to put down his feet. We ain't got there yet, so let me give you something to hang on to.
I got Brother Marshall's keys. He can't go nowhere. I got his keys. Jesus said, I've got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. It's like a lion having his teeth pulled. He might roar, but he can't bite. One more time, he made a way. Keep 
hanging on in there and he will bring you out. He brought me out. says call to me and I will answer you. We need to call on him for protection, for provision, for power. There's something else coming up in the Gulf not us, others of our family will be inundated again. So we need to be on the line, if nothing else, but to tell him thank you for protecting us. Start shoveling some stuff his way that he can put it under his feet. God has a way about it. Am I right? I didn't even get to the point where he says, Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is the sin. And the strength of the sin is the law. But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, same thing that he was saying in Romans 5. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May the Lord bless and keep you this day. We'll be looking to hear from each of you this evening on the prayer line. Call someone, give them this prayer line number, give them this code of St. Mark who have yet to call into the prayer line. Now don't make me call your number and ask you why you are not on the prayer line because I have a list of everybody who call in. I have a list that tells me what time you call in and what time you hung up down to the second. Maybe I need to print that out and paste it all over the wall. 180 days who've been making the call. This is for our benefit. It's for our children's benefit. It's for the world's benefit. I'm not praying for me. I need prayer, but I'm, I'm trying to pray for somebody else. Remember, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Prayer is going to pull us out. 